Hey there guys, Owen here from Edgewords Training, back again with another tutorial. This time we will be taking a look at how to perform mobile web testing with RunnerX. Now, mobile web testing has been possible in RunnerX for quite some time. However, with version 7.2, we now have the ability to perform improved mobile web testing against your chosen device's native browser, which we did not have the ability to do in previous versions of RunnerX. Previously, you would require the RunnerX service application and also RunnerX's own browser to be running on your device. Now, however, we can simply run our tests against a mobile device's native browser, such as Google Chrome for Android or Safari for iOS. Now, for this demonstration, I am going to be performing my tests against an emulated device. So, the device is going to be visible on the computer screen, so you guys will be able to see that as well. Now, in order to create an emulator, we must first ensure that we have Android Studio, which also allows for the SDK to be installed on our machines. Like I said, I already have the Android Studio installed on my machine, so I can simply go ahead and launch my emulator. Now, I can do this from a command prompt. So what I'm going to do is go to the start menu, type CMD, and then just open up a command prompt. Once I've got that open, what I want to do now is navigate to the bin folder of Android Studio. So I believe that this is on my C drive. App data, local, and inside the Android, inside the SDK, inside tools, and then in here we have a bin folder. This is the one we want to navigate to. So once we've got to this place, we can simply type CD and then paste that into there. So I've just grabbed the file path, pasted it into there, and hit enter on my keyboard. Okay, so I am now in the correct location. I can now make use of the emulator. Now, the first thing that I want to do is look at the emulators I currently have installed on this machine. So, if I type emulator dash list dash AVDs and hit enter, that has given us a list of the emulators currently on this machine. I can see this one here is currently named Pixel, so I'm just going to make a note of that. Okay, so the emulator's name is Pixel, so I can go ahead and run that emulator or start it up. And I do this by typing again emulator dash AVD, so not AVDS, AVD and then the name of the emulator. So emulator dash AVD Pixel and hit enter and we should now see that emulator launch. It may take a few seconds and I can just minimize that command prompt because that command prompt is what's going to keep my emulator running so I don't want to close that down just yet. And we'll wait for that to launch and once that's launched I will um, resume the tutorial. Okay, once the emulator has loaded successfully what I want to do now is launch another command prompt. I want to find out the UDID of this device. We do so by typing ADB devices. If I hit enter, it tells us the list of devices attached. And there we go. Don't worry about those two uh, lines there. Just this one, the emulator-5554. That's the one we want. So I'm going to make a note of that now. So just copying that to the clipboard going into notepad and pasting it in there. Emulator 554, that is the UDID. And I can just now close this command prompt. Now, the next thing to do is to launch Appium. Now, Appium is also set up on my machine, ready to go. All I have to do is launch the server on my local host. Now that Appium has launched, I can go ahead and launch the server on my local host 127.0.0.1 and port 4723. Okay, and hit start server. Okay, once we have launched Appium, we can now go ahead and minimize that. What I want to do now is simply launch RunnerX. So let's open up 
run Rex. I am just going to create a new test solution. I will call this web test. And I am just going to create a very simple, very straightforward web test that just clicks on a few links. So let's hit record against a mobile web application, sorry. Chrome is going to be my browser. And all my test is going to do is just click on a few links. And then hit stop. Oh, uh, go back to the browser and just close that. And drag and drop that object up. And perform a close action. Close application action. Okay, so let's run that back and make sure that it executes successfully. Before we go ahead and start trying to run it on our emulator. Okay, clicks on the links and closes the application. And that is a success. Perfect. Okay, now what I want to do is add our Appium server as a web driver endpoint. So I do this by selecting the view endpoints button just up here, clicking on that. Okay, and what I want to do now after I've clicked on the view endpoints button is say add endpoint, select the web driver endpoint type give it a name such as my Appium endpoint and the address is going to be in this format however we are going to need to make a modification so instead of localhost colon 4444 we need to get rid of that and then paste in the server and the host for Appium Okay, and once we've done that, we can now test the connection that's connected. So, BrownRex has successfully connected to our Appium endpoint. I can see there's a little bit of action going on there. So, I can click Add Endpoint and then Complete Setup. Now, what I want to do is actually edit this endpoint. So, I want to pass in some capabilities. So, over here on the right, I have the option to set as automation route, view details or delete. I want to just view the details and then add a new configuration. I'm going to give this configuration a name, my configuration, and then in here we can pass in the capabilities. Now the capabilities are basically what's going to tell our Appium server what kind of session we want to run. So what kind of environment do we want to run our tests in so we in here we could pass in um, various different platforms such as Windows or Linux or iOS um, and we can also pass in different browsers now I'm just going to keep this very simple and use only the ones that we need um, so we do actually need four to ensure that it runs and they will be in this format um, so the first one is going to be the device name which can be set to anything so the device name I can call that owns emulator and separate each capability with a comma okay the second capability is going to be the platform name and this is going to be Android because our device is an Android device Next, the platform version, which we can find out by going over to our device, going to the settings, and then if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see there Android 7.1.1. Android version, yep, yeah. okay, so Android version is 7.1.1, and that will need to be typed exactly as you can see it. And the final capability is going to be the unique device identifier, which, as we found out earlier, is just emulator-5554. So emulator-5554. Okay, and that is it. So those are our four capabilities that we need to ensure that our test runs. Now what I want to do is just hit save. Okay, so that's now saved. I now want to make this my active configuration. So selecting this from the drop down here, my configuration. And there we go. So this configuration now is set to run against this device. 
So let's go back here and I need to change the endpoint that my test is currently going to run on. At the moment this is just going to execute on the local machine but if I click here to set the Appium endpoint as the automation route this is now going to use the Appium server to run our tests on which will in turn run our test on the emulator. So let's hit run and then quickly go over to the emulator. Now there may be a slight delay here which can cause some problems so sometimes the test may fall over. All we need to do is change the delay so let's just see if that's yeah that's caused a failure. You can see the operation has timed out but if I just go up to the settings go over to plugins and then scroll down here we've got a web driver command timeout if we just change that over to 30 seconds that will give us a bit more time or give our emulator a bit more time to actually run that test okay so now that we've changed the timeout to 30 seconds let's try and run that again so if I hit run jump over to my emulator again it may take a few seconds but hopefully it should run the test perfect exactly what we are looking for so it has launched the browser clicked on the links and then it's finally closed the browser and we can see over here that we've had a success and also just up here we can see the configuration that was used for this run and we have our capability set there so there we have it we have executed our tests using an Appium server as a web driver endpoint so we've executed our tests on a mobile emulator and we can just as easily do this with a real device okay just to quickly recap so what we've done is first launched our emulator which was our emulator device we did this from the command prompt we then got the unique device identifier for this mobile emulator which we just simply went over to a command prompt typed ADB devices and that tells us the UDID of the currently connected devices we then launched Appium on our local host we also launched RunnerX we went ahead and created a simple web test we then added a web driver endpoint to our project we then added the capabilities such as device name, platform name, platform version and the UDID for our emulator or emulated device. We could then finally save and run our tests. We did have to make that small change so we just went over to the global settings, over to the plugins tab and we just changed the uh, timeout for web driver. So the web driver command timeout we just change that to 30 seconds just to allow our tests to execute okay then guys I hope that this tutorial has been helpful um, for more information regarding any of the automation tools that we've used today you can simply head over to our website which is edgewordstraining.co.uk so if I just go over to this not webdriver2 edgewordstraining.co.uk we do have courses on both RunnerX and Appium so please feel free to take a look at those and until next time goodbye for now